The way we chose the research initiatives uh, was based on some assumptions that we had about why we came to the university. We r recognized that we were going to be living in a, con in a carbon constrained world. We thought it was smart to make a high priority of looking at, at uh, research that would help reduce CO2 emissions. And as it turns out, there's tremendous capability here in this, in this area. Another area that we're very strong in in this campus is electrochemistry. And so we began to address the issue of can we do what plants do? That is, is it possible to generate fuel from sunlight, CO2, and water? We call that sunlight to fuels. And we believe the answer is yes. A large number of the faculty here in chemistry and chemical engineering and mechanical engineering all with a focus around fundamental electrochemistry research in energy and in uh, biology uh, and in sensors, uh, fuel cells and batteries and, and uh, a wide array of different applications. One of the things here that we have uh, a lot of expertise in and we've been working on for, for some time is how do we effectively use the energy of sunlight uh, and use it to generate fuel directly. And I'm not talking about say a solar panel you might put on your roof. But this, this idea is more to take the energy from sunlight and directly turn it into a liquid fuel. When you set out to do uh, fuels from sunlight, the, the first important thing you need to find is, is uh, a, a photocatalyst. And these are very special materials that uh, can take incoming uh, solar radiation or a photon of light and cause charge separation to happen in a material. And that's important because now if you, if you have a material that can do that, with that separation of charge you can do chemistry. So on the initial screening we can look at uh, you know, dozens of these different materials um, uh, very rapidly. Um, and this is using a technique that was developed by Alan Bard uh, called scanning electrochemical microscopy. And what it allows you to do is test a, a wide array of materials, literally an array, uh, in, a, in a short amount of time. One of the best uh, photo materials uh, available now is uh, a uh, bismuth vanadate system. So you've got two kinds of, of uh, atoms in there to begin with. And then if you just add a little bit of tungsten, you get four times the performance. And then if you add a little bit of molybdenum to that, you get better performance again. And so finding these sorts of combinations is not straightforward. Um, and it's not obvious how to, how to get started on that problem. So that, that's, that's something we have a lot of expertise here. Once you have those materials, then you need to find a, another kind of material that can take that separated charge and do that chemistry. The barriers to this now are, are not in making hydrogen. We can make hydrogen from water in a number of ways. It's being able to do it economically and to do it with materials that are earth abundant, uh, that aren't uh, expensive and hard to get and that we can uh, see developing into a, a real process that we can deploy all over the world. So really the impact of, of what we're trying to develop here is the ability to make fuel, to, which is stored energy, um, from sunlight and water and carbon dioxide. And so that's, that's a green chemistry.